Welcome all of you folks that are watching this program. It's called God's Plan for Saving Souls. This is a special program where we look at the sanctuary service, the ancient sanctuary service given to Moses in the wilderness of Arabia. With me today is Stephen Dickey. Stephen, we're glad you could be on the show today. Thank you for having me. And a special guest, my friend from the Middle East, Abdullah. Thank you for joining us. And myself, Rudy Harnish, and uh, we just want to welcome all of you folks. Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullah. So our whole reason for doing this is because um, we want to talk about the sanctuary that was given to Moses in the wilderness of Arabia. And as you can see on the screen there, this is an outline of, of the entire sanctuary system. And we're going to go through that in the next few series, but we want to, we want to lay the groundwork as to when this was given and why it was given. And that's going to happen. We're going to have to take some history lessons and go back to the time, even to the time of Adam and Eve, where they first learned about the sacrifice of uh, animals. But the sanctuary that was given to Moses, uh, this happened in Mount Sinai. That's where Moses received the instructions regarding the building of the sanctuary. Before then, they had done sacrifices, but now it was a, more of an elaborate system. And this is the Moses that led the Israelites through the wilderness from Egypt when they were in slavery. And you know the story, it's in the honored Quran, it's in the Bible, where God's people were delivered from the Egyptians. Maybe you can talk about that, which you know from, from what happened there. So when you refer to the Bible, you mean the Torah, the Torah. Yes. which is the Old Testament. In the Torah, the, the five okay. books of Moses and the prophets, and then later on the Injil, but definitely the, the Torah. And that story is, is in the Torah. Anyway, this is that Moses that was given the plan for the sanctuary. Something very interesting I found is when I was studying this um, about Moses. In the Quran, he's mentioned 167 times. So it's not something you can just bypass and say, well, you know, it doesn't matter, it isn't important. He's mentioned 167 times. And in the Torah, he's mentioned 705 times. And again in the Injil, 79 times. So the topic of Moses is huge. It's very important to mention that many times. You look at something like this, the information he was given by Allah. So it must have meant something to be mentioned that many times in the Quran. That's right. And then for Allah to give him this information about this device you're going to be sharing with us here, that uh, how to solve the sin issue. Yes. It's significant because uh, the Quran talks quite a bit about the plan that uh, Allah shared with Adam when they fall, him and Eve. And this plan was transferred from Adam to his two sons, Cain and Abel. And then from there, also the Quran talks about this plan being also transferred down through to the other prophets, mm -hmm. specifically Moses. That's why you see uh, a significant number of uh, mentioning of his name and and every time his name is mentioned there is a connotation and a, a reference to this plan. We're going to talk more about that in another program on, of what happened back in Adam and Eve's time because it was very significant and uh, we're just going to cover that in the next issue. But we're going to talk about today is uh, this is that Moses that left Egypt with the children of Israel they went through the wilderness, and there at the Mount Sinai is where they were given this information. The other thing that I found was very interesting, this information was not given to Moses in Israel, but it was given in Arabia, and that's in the Middle East. And so to me, that spoke that God is interested in all people of all nations. And he simply chose the Israelites to be the, the avenue to take this message to the rest of the world. Well, you know, I think in, as Christians, you know, in, uh, in Acts, in, in Romans there, it says you know, how Paul, 
he went to Arabia That's right. for a period of time to get peace, solitude, instruction, and to, to, to pray to Allah. It's interesting that Arabia has always played a key role for major events that were about to happen. Ever since the time of Ishmael? Yes. They've had a key role to play. And how long did Paul stay in Arabia? Do you remember? At least uh, over a year. It was three years. Yes. Three whole years he spent in Arabia. And I don't think he was just there. I think he was visiting with the people. I think he was encouraging the Arabs of that day in the way of Allah, in the way of God. I really do. Well, we look at uh, Mount Sinai. We don't know if this is the, the actual picture or not, but it was, it's, uh, it's where that area is. And uh, this is the site. But it says in, in the Torah, in Deuteronomy 5.2, that God made a covenant with us at Horeb. That meant Sinai. God made a covenant with his people. And that was really important. Because I found also, Abdul, that uh, it says this in the Quran about this covenant that was made with uh, the Israelites at Sinai. And so I have this in Surah 2, 93, Al-Baqarah, right? And remember, we took your covenant, same word as in the Torah. We raised above you the towering height, heights of Mount Sinai, saying, hold firmly to what we have given you and hearken to the law. God's people were to hang on to what was given to Moses at Sinai. And it says, hearken to the law, to the law that was given. Well, this information about the sanctuary was given there. And here the Quran comes hundreds and hundreds, many hundreds of years later, and it's pointing you back to Sinai. I think that's significant, very significant. Any comments? Well, um, as I mentioned, the Quran talks quite a bit about this plan or this uh, covenant that uh, is being given at first to Adam mm -hmm. and Eve and then being given again to Moses. And therefore, uh, this covenant, this plan, uh, is significant to, as you mentioned, to all the world. Okay. It started in Arabia, given to the Israelites through That's Moses, right. and then to the rest of the world. You know, God is no respecter of persons. No. And in every, in every land, in every country, in whatever language, those that, that honor God, that respect him, that believe him, he will honor. So it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. It doesn't matter where you're from. The whole issue is, will you believe and will you receive what Allah gives for us? You know, this story of the covenant that you're talking here in the Quran, uh, the Christian world has actually forgotten that while the scriptures were chained to monastery and convent walls, um, this book, the Quran, was in every single home, in every single village throughout all of the Islamic world. So the Arab people were never without this kind of verses from God telling the story, but the Christians in Europe had nothing, just darkness. It's the called dark the ages. Dark Ages. For many hundreds of years? Right. Christians had never thought about that, but it's fact that this was the word that Allah was giving to all the Arab people because they were descendants of the other son of Abraham and God had his promise to Abraham which you've already brought out. And we Christians have forgotten that. But this shows the love that Allah had. His compassion, His mercy. Yeah. Well here it is in Arabic. وَإِذَا أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الطُّورُ خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ وَاسْمَعُوا قَالُوا سَمَعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا وَأَشْرَبُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ الْعِجْرَ بِكُفْرِهِمْ قُلْ بِئْسَمَا مَا بِئْسَمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِهِ إِيمَانُكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ There you have it in Arabic this covenant that God made with the children of Israel. Here's another one in Surah 263. And remember, we took your covenant. And we raised above you the towering height of Mount Sinai, saying, hold firmly to what we have given you and bring ever to remembrance what is therein. Perchance you may fear Allah. There's this one phrase here especially that I like to talk about. 
it says here, hold firmly to what we have given you and bring ever to remembrance. What is therein? So this whole idea of the Torah being uh, outdated or whatever, it keeps pointing back to what was given on Mount Sinai. And I found that interesting because the sanctuary message was given to Moses on Mount Sinai, as well as some other things we're going to be talking about. That's correct. And we're going to touch on uh, another big topic around uh, is really the Quran saying that the Torah and the Injil, which is the Bible, are being altered and they are being corrupt corrupted. Because the Quran itself talks about God is the guardian of his word. That's right. And the Quran it touches on this topic, and we would uh, maybe spend mm -hmm. uh, a few moments to bring these verses and try to uh, bring light to them and make it clear in the minds of a Muslim person what the Quran really is saying. Right. Because there is a lot of um, people are afraid to confused, maybe, and confused too. as well to go and read the Bible because they believe that the Quran says that it's being corrupted when the Quran is really not saying that. Let's spend time also we're bringing... Going to be we're yes. going to be discussing that. Excellent point. Yes. On Mount Sinai, when Moses was there, he received tablets. It says that in the Quran and in the, and in the Torah. Here's what it says in, in the Torah, Exodus 31, 18. And he gave, this is referring to God, he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, and this is the interesting part, written with the finger of God, written with the finger of Allah, who wrote, so this is really important. The other thing that, that I find interesting in both of these, in the Quran and the Torah, is that God did not go through the angel Gabriel. He did not go through another prophet. He went directly to Moses. And I find, find that's very important. When something obviously, God didn't want to have any confusion. He spoke directly to Moses. I found that very interesting. Because in another place, uh, I read both in the Quran and in the Bible, in the Torah, is when, when God came down, Allah came down, and there was a bush on fire, and he was in that fire, and there was a voice from the fire that said, I am Allah. I thought, to think that now, the creator of this universe, to descend into a form of a bush on fire, mm -hmm. to commune with Moses, has got to be incredibly significant. Here it says in Surah 7, 145, we ordained laws for him, Moses, in the tablets in all matters, both commanding and explaining all things, and said, take and hold these with firmness and enjoin thy people to hold fast by the best in precepts. So these laws that were written on these tablets are the best in precepts. And he was told to hold these with firmness. And not only that, it says explaining all, all things. things. So God, Allah, in, in his magnificence, tries to communicate with yeah. us so that we can understand all things, which is this plan that he explained to Adam and to Eve and to their son, and of course Adam yeah. to his two sons, and, and now to Moses and to all mankind, all things. And they are best in the precepts that God wants us to follow him, That's right. to understand. What amazes me is most Christians have never heard of this before. That's correct. Do you think that the, the Quran is some kind of an evil book or a wicked book or I something? Would, I would also say that also Muslims, don't know that they don't know all this as well. They don't understand what is the explanation of all things. There is not enough tension uh, uh, okay. being given to this particular okay. uh, Excellent. topic. Excellent. Here it is in Arabic, Abdo. وَكِتَبْنَا لَهُ فِي الْأَلْوَاحِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْعِضَةً وَتَفْصِيلًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ فَخُذُوهَا بِقُوَّةٍ وَأَمْرُ قَوْمُكَ يَأْخُذُوا بِإِحْسَانِهَا سَأَرِيكُمْ دَارُ الْفَاسِقِينَ So again here it says, take it with strength. فَخُذْهَا بِقُوَّةٍ that means take it with strength and command your people. Wow. You see? 
Here's another one from the Torah, Exodus 24, 12. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain. And this is Sinai, same mountain. And stay here. And I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments I have written for their instruction. Torah, Exodus 24, 12. That Moses called up to Mount Sinai to get these tablets. Very interesting. And also the information on the sanctuary. Because how long was he up in Mount Sinai? Do you remember? It was 40 days. 40 days. The Torah says he was up there 40 days. And during that time, he did neither eat nor drink. And the reason why is because God sustained him. He was in the presence of Allah. And that sustained him. You look at this and, and you realize that both... Uh, a Bible and a Quran is saying the same thing because the people of either culture don't believe something like that would be said in the other book. That's right. But this shows that when you really take the time to look at it, objectively, objectively, it's there. It's there, yeah. And it's precious. This is so, this is so, when I first, you know, I'm as a Seventh day Adventist, I first looked at this, I said, this is just amazing. Yeah. Well, these positive things that are in the Quran that matches up with the Torah. Abdullah, when you, as a little boy in the Middle East, and you were learning the things from the Quran, and later you came across these things in the Torah, what was your, what was your feeling? I mean, what, I mean, to us, it was just amazing when we put it together. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there, is, there was not enough emphasis on uh, Moses as far as the uh, the commands, the commandments, the tablets, this plan, this great plan that was given to Moses that he should take with strength and mm -hmm. to command the people. Um, it was not enough uh, focus on it, so it, when we read it, we were just getting um, the gist of what is the surah is trying to say, but there was not enough detailed description of what each of these verses meant. So now, um, uh, stepping back, reading the Quran one more time, and now reading also the Torah, and looking at the parallelism between the two, I can see that God is trying to speak to all nations uh, through the Quran, through the Bible, that He have a plan. And this plan is so important to all human being to be able to understand God and to be able to understand his plan. What is this plan that he's talking about? He's giving this to us because of his mercy, isn't he? And his compassion. Because he wants no one lost. Regardless of where they're from, what color of their skin, he doesn't want anyone lost. Here it says another verse from the Torah, Deuteronomy 5.22. These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly in the mountain. This is referring again to Sinai. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and he gave them to me. This is Moses speaking now. So he received these two tablets of stone upon which were written the Ten Commandments. Maybe we'll talk about that another time. But for tonight, we just want to look at this as what happened, uh, the information he got, where it was. It was on Sinai. This was so important from the Quran and from the Torah. And, and the verses are almost identical. And, it, and then also this information about the sanctuary that we, this, this whole series is about. This is where Moses got it. Those 40 days he spent up in Mount Sinai, he received this information of the sanctuary. And in this sanctuary, we're going to find out in these next several sessions we're going through, is outlined in great detail how God is planning to save souls. And it's very interesting. It's extremely interesting. You know, that's one of the things as I visit with Muslims around the world and we visit um, so many Muslims who don't have the assurance that uh, heaven's available to them easily. And these promises that they grasp, it's, it's thrilling because the God that all men serve is, is wanting to be known by all tribes and kindreds, tongues and people so that they can realize that salvation is available to all mankind. It's not about doing, it's about listening. And the world of Islam is talking about being submitted. Uh, Muslim and Islam means submit. And, and that's what we're saying as Christians as well. We must be submitted yeah. Amen. to what we're talking about here. And Christians are no different than Muslims. We need to be submitted. Yes. 
I uh, would like to add to that too. As a Christian person, you've been introduced to this plan and you know what's this plan. <clears throat> but for a Muslim person, as you said, that there is a missing link, yes. mm -hmm. which is all along is in the Quran, this great plan that should be taken with strength, with power, mm -hmm. and to be commanded to the people, to be given to the people. A Christian person received it. A Muslim person is submissive, but there is a missing thing there to the submission. Yes, I love God, I love Allah, I worship Him with all my strength, with all my might. I want to please God, I want to, you know, be a, a, a reverent person in my relationship with my family, with uh, my uh, neighbors, with Allah as first. But what is next? This next thing is missing. But it's in the Quran all along. It's all along is there. And, uh, and I'm hoping and praying that through uh, this program will be able to shed light on this plan and to explain it to a Muslim person as what is this plan? Is God there just arbitrarily giving mm -hmm. commands and commanding and demanding uh, to be respected and being holy? Yes, He is, but what is it that really God wants? Because He is merciful, He is compassionate. We say that in, in Christianity, a Christian person say that, in Judaism, a Jewish person would say that. In Islam, a Muslim person would say that. But what is the evidence of his great, mm -hmm. uh, greatness, his mercy, mercy, his being merciful, compassionate? It's right in the middle of Quran. It's right there. Abdul, I'm just glad you're here to bring, because you were raised in a different culture than I was. And you can bring these things out to people that are watching, that have, like you, who are raised with these principles, but never really put the two dots together before. And this is, I'm just happy you're here with us to bring these things out. And this whole subject of the sanctuary, most Christians don't understand this. They don't have a clue that this is, it's been in the, in the Bible, in the Torah all those years, and they may have even read it, but they don't understand it. And so this is for, for all people, for both Christians and Muslims as well. So this brings us to the sanctuary, God's plan of saving souls. The first session, we're almost at an end here. And I just wanted to thank you all for, for being here because this was outlined on Mount Sinai to Moses, was outlined God's or plan, Allah's plan, how he's going to deal with the sin issue. Zabur, Psalm 77, 13. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? This is our main focusing verse for this entire series, Psalms Zabur 77, 13. God's way is in the sanctuary. That's why we're studying this, Stephen, to understand God's way. Well, Stephen, I'm glad you're here with us. And Abdul, glad you joined us. Good to be here. And all of you folks that are watching, we're just thankful you joined us, and I hope you can join us for the next series of God's plan of saving souls. Thank you.